Hello there, this is Jonathan with the SS Motion bringing you another review. This time looking at a Halo Mega Box Signature Series, the NMPD Pelican Airbase. This is set number CPF71. It has 1,792 pieces and retails for around 150 to 180 pounds. This set comprises of the NMPD Pelican itself, a landing pad, a control centre at the back here, a repainted Brute Chieftain, an NMPD Pilot, an NMPD Officer and of course ODST Mickey from the Halo 3 ODST game. You also get a bunch of accessories here and hidden throughout the set that we'll go into in further detail in a second. So this is of course the NMPD Pelican from Halo 3 ODST and it is a fantastic new build of the original Pelican we got in the uh, original line. Obviously that was a green one and it was when the parts clutch wasn't too great and this just builds upon it. You can see that that set was a template for this one but then you can see that they've made miles of improvement in terms of quality of build, accuracy etc. So for example you've got a better silhouette going along, you've got this rebuilt kind of section to the cockpit that was just side panel bricks originally so you've got a lot more of a faithful build for the uh, Pelican kind of design. Absolutely fantastic. But you've also got the NMPD features that are added here such as the uh, lights on each side on the wingtips as well. You've also got a lot of the NMPD insignias that are around the ship. The fold down landing gear that's on each side. There is no wheel on that but they've used a little black tile to simulate that there is a wheel on it. I don't think they could have done a part that does accommodate a wheel in such a small section so well done for doing that. If we rotate round obviously the wings still move up and down. You have the flaps that move up and down here. On the bottom of the engine, you've got another little flap that opens up, revealing some sort of exhaust vent. Just fold that down. As you rotate it round, you have the opening canopy, of course. In here, you can fit two figures. Now, there's a seat at the front, and there's not really a seat here, but he can fit because there's tons of printed control pads in here. You can't really see them because of how dark it is in there. You might be able to see just a bit of green showing up here. Definitely improvement over the previous Pelican. If I just lift this up, you have a working cert, well, not working, but rotating pivot searchlight which is great that is faithful to the uh, NMPD Pelican version because they removed the guns same on this wing that can all rotate landing gear again can flip round you have a ramp at the back that can fold down again this isn't really faithful to the um, Halo 3 game in Halo 3 it's kind of like a two part ramp that splits at the top and bottom bit of a shame that they've not managed to work that in yet because I would like to have a shorter platform here with like a little gun turret on having a gun turret on this as it's flying around looks a little bit silly I'll accept that they probably can't do that door yet. I might work on a custom, see what I can do, but it's acceptable for what we get here. As we rotate round, you have the uh, new rebuild of the engines. Finally, these are correctly orientated. If you remember on the original Pelican, the engines were the wrong way round. They've fixed that finally. These do pivot up and down, as expected. You also have a flap on the top again, just like the original build. If we just rotate round, you've got nice detailing on the engines, nice thrust, and it's angled correctly at the vertical downward thrust. Now here, normally, the wood be a little support arm. Now this can fold out normally and attach to a mantis or a warthog. However, I've removed it because as we've discovered, the NMPD warthog doesn't have that attachment, which is a bit of a shame. So I feel it looks a little odd of it carrying an actual UNSC hog, so I've removed it. It's not too hard to pull out. It's just a two little peg system on that, but I definitely removed it because I think it is a bit silly that Megabox added a feature to this Pelican, but then forgot to add it to its uh, accompanying vehicle. Bit of a shame there. I guess you could mod it if you have the uh, Night Ops Gorse Hog, but I'd rather not mix and match parts, so it's a bit of a shame that that's happened. But otherwise, you have a fantastic new build of the Pelican. Absolutely love it. It's ever so slightly bigger than previous Pelicans. It's just a little bit longer by about an inch or so, but nothing majorly out of scale. So this isn't going to dwarf your previous Pelicans too much. It's just going to look like a variant alongside the others, which is absolutely great. I was worried that when they announced the NMPD Signature Series, that this would be a massive scaled out version, and it was just going to be ridiculous in terms of matching previous builds but luckily Megablox have done and given us the best of both worlds. We get a new update, it is slightly upscaled but still not ludicrously big. So this is the command center that we saw at the back of the set before. This can be positioned wherever you want. There is just this fold down ramp, but there is no clamp or connection to the landing pad itself here. This just sits down onto it. So you can pretty much position it where you want, or if anything, use it as a separate building wherever you want. The ramp works pretty well. You could angle it and put some extra steps in if you wanted, because it is quite steep. But it's a great that they've made this a separate piece so that you can do whatever the hell you want with it. Absolutely fantastic little build. Tons of little yellow fence in here, which is just a great little addition for realism. You got a nice little 
pivoting turret here that can be uh, manned by any figure. It's just the same as a warthog turret. You've got a nice little satellite dish here. You've got a little antenna that if I just move it, you can see that it goes into a fork shape here. Great little detail and a nice little difference to the typical antennas that we get. If we rotate it round, you can see that there's tons of little control panels in here. You've even got a superintendent logo there. Really, really nice detail and pretty faithful to the game as well. Nice little health pack printed on the wall here that can be pulled off and used by a figure. You've also got a little control panel here. And then past that, all these little accessory pieces are removable. So you've got these little storage crates, you've got little fuel canisters here, you've got these little orange barrels, you've got all sorts of little things. There are even extra barrels that are on the landing pads that you can throw in there as well. And there's plenty of space in there for figures. I thought it was only this floor and this floor. I was quite surprised that we had this little extra. I thought it was just going to be a hollow kind of section with like just support legs. I'm glad that they've made an actual level that you can peg figures to. So it's a great little command center. Fill it full of marines, fill it full of police officers. Absolutely great. No complaints with this piece one bit. Taking a look at the landing pad itself, you can see that it's got some nice printed detail here. P4 for platform 4. Nice little printed uh, design here. These were actual um, vents that you could like kind of shoot through in the game. Obviously that would have been hard to do with pieces, so they've just done a printed detail and it looks absolutely great. You've got these nice little red lawning lights on the side. Just nice detail in general. This is a nice and smooth section to land whatever you want on it. It's really simple, but it really stands out as a fantastic build. Really like it. It's got some little support legs to elevate it underneath. So it isn't just a flat board. It does have some support panels to it. It's just a nice piece and it's great for putting any aircraft on. The Pelican fits on it perfectly fine. But you can put on anything. Hornet, uh, Falcon, anything you want really that you want to land on it. So it's great for both NMPD and UNSC forces. You can use it however you want. And it just looks absolutely great to have it as a display piece. I'm really glad Mega included this as we are lacking a lot of base features. We got the fire base and that is pretty much just, you know, it's just a wall. I'm not trying to be mean but it is just a wall so it's glad to see like some base infrastructure like landing pads and little command centers we are starting to get something that looks like a base if you buy all these sets and build them up so as you can see you get another crate section with a health pack and a fusion core you get a missile turret which is what you use in the halo 3 odst nmpd mission you get a little reactor um of i guess generator should say now this is in the um nmpd mission they explode when you shoot them but it is an obscure little uh, prop from halo it's just in that one mission never been seen again but it's absolutely great that they've included it um, just to add to some diversity of your uh, base dioramas absolutely great now you get a little grey rocket launcher here this is the Halo 3 design which is obviously fitting for this uh, set you get the Halo 3 shotgun again absolutely fitting not so fitting is the Halo 4 slash 5 sniper rifle it would have made more sense to include the older sniper rifle sculpts or just a new design of that entirely but they've included the Halo 4 5 one I have no complaints because I love this weapon in grey but it is a little odd for not matching the rest of the set when everything else is pretty darn faithful. So taking a look at the figures now, and we'll start off with the NMPD officer. Now this is a re-release of the NMPD officer from the 2014 police car. It's still a great figure, plenty of detail on it. It is just recolored, so we've got different colored undersuit. The uh, armor I think is a little different shade. The hat is a little different shade. Past that though, it's pretty much the same figure. However, as you've noticed, we finally get some sleeveless arms. For some reason, Megabox did them with full-blown jumpsuits on, even though most of them did have sleeveless uh, t-shirts on. In the game itself. So it's glad that Mega are correcting their mistakes as it were. We're finally getting them sleeveless. These are in this set and the NMPD Warthog. But past that it's an absolutely great figure. Nice printed detail with the police and the logo on the chest. Like I say I'm glad that we've got it updated now. Now again another re-release this one from the NMPD Hornet is of course the NMPD Pilot. Again it has the updated sleeveless arms. But again correcting mistakes from previous releases. You also get a different sort of printed helmet design. On the Hornet version you don't get this black stripe that runs the helmet so it's just a nice little variant so you can tell the figures apart printed chest detail and pretty much just the same nmpd armor that we've seen in the past one of the standout figures from this set is the repainted brute chieftain now this was in the chieftain charge brute chopper set and it is still the same figure there is no added articulation or removable armor as we have started to expect it is an old sculpt but the paint job is absolutely fantastic it is perhaps one of the best painted figures mega have ever done you can see here there's some nice two-tone black of the red and the yellow and the oranges that runs across the horn section of the helmet it's on the armor pads on his uh, chest on his knees a little bit 
on the little cod piece section here. Absolutely great detail. I really, really like this repaint. It's very faithful to the games. It isn't just the red that they put on the previous releases. You've got the accurate color tones. I hope we do see this in the future carried over to the new Brutes or releases. It's just a great figure. No complaints here at all. Really, really like this figure. And it is a standout Brute, which we don't really get. Brutes have been neglected quite a lot. So I'm glad that they've paid a lot of attention to this release. So taking a look at another standout figure in this set is ODST Mickey from Halo 3 ODST. This is an absolutely brilliant figure. I'm glad that we're finally getting around to completing this ODST squad because it is a great squad. It's full of character, full of cool armor. You get a lot of unique armor pieces here, which I'm surprised at. I expected this to be a simple repaint of an ODST with just some red markings. But you get a nice new shoulder piece that is exclusive to Mickey. You get the little sculpted on helmet torch up here. You get the ammo bandolier. Now that's like an elastic piece that goes around the leg so it can be removed if you want to customize the figure. But you just get a fantastic little faithful figure here. No backpack unfortunately. Mickey does have like an exclusive backpack with an antenna on it. Bit of a shame they didn't include that but I guess because it's a one-off piece they probably didn't want to risk the costs of it. It probably wouldn't pay back very well. So you can just use a normal rucksack if you want. But other than that it's a great figure. No complaints. You have the usual articulation and removable armor so I'm really happy with this figure. Definitely something that you want to add to your collection and let's face it you want to complete that ODST squad so you're gonna to have to get this figure at some point. So overall, this set is pretty amazing. You get a great rebuild of the original Pelican, this time in NMPD colours. A lot of new features in there, to the build integrity improvements. It's a great update. I'm happy they've done it. Here, you get a fantastic set. You get a great little landing pad, which is fantastic for building base dios. You get a great ODST figure that we've been after for a while with some actual new sculpted features, which is great. Not just um, a repaint like Dutch was. Extra NMPD are always good. And the repainted Brute Chieftain is absolutely fantastic fantastic. It's a shame it's not in the new articulation but I hope that we do see this figure upgraded with the same paint quality because this one is just brilliant. It just makes all the other Brute Chieftains look terrible. It's really good paint job wise. Past that it is an absolutely fantastic set. So that's it for this review. I hope you've enjoyed it so don't forget to like, favourite and subscribe and we'll see you in the next video. Bye! How <coughs> bad? Not good! <coughs> We're gonna get you out of here. Not my air one not. It's alright. Ah! I know another way. <laughs>